another mysterious shroud concealing another charity bike giveaway. Uh, big thanks this time to another subscriber, a gentleman by the name of Andy, one of the legends, who has donated this bike. He didn't want anything for it, he just wanted to make sure that it goes to a good home. Now before we do the reveal, just a couple of points about this bike. Um, first of all, Andy has almost completed the restoration of it. He has done a few resto mod updates to it. And I think he got to the point where I think it didn't fit him or he uh, moved on to a different project. So it's largely complete. There's very little that I need to do to it. Um, anyway, without further ado, let's have a few clues as to what this bike is. So first few clues here. First of all, clearly it's a mountain bike, hence MTB. Secondly, uh, this Tange or Tunge, however it's pronounced, Chromoly, is the real deal. This is a serious frame material. This may not be Prestige or Infinity, but even the more basic grades of, uh, of this material are solid frames. So this thing is built to take a beating. Um, the second thing of note, as well as of course this beautiful um, glittery paintwork, which by the way is largely unmarked, the bike has clearly done almost no mileage, um, is the fact that it is an 18.5 inch frame size, which is good news for whoever this gets donated to, because uh, that's a bang average frame size for most adults. And also I suppose um, the real connoisseurs will already be clamoring that they've spotted this. This is the tread pattern of the uh, Ritchie Megabyte tires, which were quite a desirable aftermarket tire back in the 90s. Uh, I think my brother and I both ran pairs of these. Um, these are original and they did come with the bike from new. They're not, however, Ritchie tires. They are a Cheng Shin reproduction. Nevertheless, they're very good. Apart from the mud, they are pretty much unused. So they're staying put. A few clues here that date the bike to, I'd say, the late 90s. First of all, this eight-speed Olivio transmission and this parallax generation of hubs, if indeed the transmission and wheel set are original. Uh, that suggests to me around maybe 1998, 1999. What I do know is that this bike originally came with uh, Shimano Olivio cantilever brakes, but Andy has done a very tasteful resto mod upgrade to these V-brakes with uh, certainly not the most basic, some actually rather nice Clark's cabling kits. So I'm gonna let that stay put because although it's not original, what it does do is vastly improve the braking performance of the bike. The next resto mod upgrade he has done, uh, tastefully and skillfully, is remove the front derailleur and the triple chain set and move to a one by eight transmission. Um, this single chainring setup is absolutely fine for most uses, like commuting, playing around in the park. This isn't going to be sold or used as a performance bike, so I'm inclined to keep this as well. I think the thing runs quite well enough with it, so uh, I think 1x8 is how it's going to stay. And while we're down here, as I said in one of my Muddy Fox restoration videos, one of the surest signs that a bike has been either well looked after or barely used at all is if the chainstay round here is in good shape. There's not a single bit of chain rash here. It, it basically looks like the thing's either never been ridden off road or indeed at all. Um, underneath the cobwebs and the dust, this metallic paint is immaculate, which is very good news. I think all I need to do is jet this thing off and then I can show you what this bike is. So I've jetted it off and as well as confirming that the paintwork is pretty much mint underneath the dust and cobwebs, I'm also finding plenty more reasons to love this bike, including genuine Araya rims, certainly no cheap substitute here. Uh, another nice little touch that dates this thing to the 90s is this suspension specific branding. What this basically meant back in the day was you could upgrade this um, fully rigid frame set to a short travel suspension fork without it lifting the front end so much that it throws your steering angles out. Uh, in a, but to be honest, you wouldn't want to because this thing's perfect with the rigid fork that it has. It looks and rides beautifully. Genuine Calloy seat pin and binder there. Uh, no clues just yet as to what it is, but one thing that I am going to have to sort out is this comedy steerer extender with an aftermarket stem and bar. Um, I don't like steerer extenders anyway, they make the whole front end look funny. Unless you've got some kind of back injury, you really don't want to be riding sat bolt upright. Um, and secondly, this stem anyway needs to go in the bin because several of the threads on it, at least two here, are stripped. So I'm going to put this back to the uh, quill stem that it was intended to come with. Before we raid my stem stash for a suitable replacement, these two beauties being the shortlist, uh, and then the grand unveil, a quick word on why you should subscribe to this channel over this coming winter. Um, this is what's coming up. This is the waiting list of projects, not least the S-Works, which you'll have seen the video, has a litany of problems that need fixing. Um, this is my titanium commuter, which needs a bit of a clean up. The uh, brakes on this 
epic World Cup need bleeding. The Titanium Dynatech is actually all right at the moment. Uh, the, the Scott genius here needs that shock sorting out. Uh, the 87 Saracen is getting rack and mud guards fitted. Um, I think that's going to keep me busy for the next few weeks, certainly for the next few videos, so please do stay tuned. All right, time for at least a partial unveil. It is, in fact, a mongoose. Now, this was the definitive BMX brand for us kids in the 80s. Uh, and in the early 90s, when they introduced their mountain bikes, their sponsored team rider was none other than John Tomac. So this is a bike with a legit pedigree. Now, this thing isn't just an extender, it's also a converter, which basically means you're converting a threaded steer into a threadless so you can run a more modern uh, clamp-on style of stem. However, a high quality original quill stem is certainly gonna beat a broken modern stem. So in the bin, this one goes. And this, although it looks like titanium, by the way, it isn't, is certainly gonna lift the look of this bike. Okay, here's our next challenge. Um, nothing wrong with this handlebar at all. In fact, it's good as new, if not indeed brand new. But this 31.8 uh, diameter at the central bulge is far too big for an old school stem. You can see here just by eye, this thing's as fat as a snake that's trying to digest a farm animal. So what do we do? We have to find a period correct handlebar. And of course, never underestimate Dr. Frankenbike's laboratory. Every part there is somewhere exists on my floor. There you go, a period correct, 1998, probably the exact year. Um, a Zonic double wall, uh, low rise handlebar in a nice pink anodized finish, um, which of course also is a, is a nice upgrade because a Zonic was top quality kit back in the day. It's slightly wider too, which uh, always helps for comfort. And of course, most importantly, a bit of pink anodizing always makes things look nicer. Now this goes to the same place as uh, all my charity projects, which is this one, CFC, Helping Kids With Cancer, the charity bike shop in Chalton in South Manchester, um, which is where my last project, the uh, Hard Rock, went. By the way, I know that one of you paid extremely generously for that Hard Rock and they sent a note to say thanks to everybody. So just again, I'd like to thank the people like Andy and the previous donors and subscribers that have sent me stuff to donate to charity. Uh, and of course, those of you that buy the stuff and um, putting money into the hands of the charity. Um, long may it continue, please keep them coming.